what do you do when you live in a beautiful neighborhood with rolling hills you have found your dream home it's the school district that you want your children to go to but however as time plays out you find you happen to be on the street where the homes are the lowest look at the elevation change here in this drone footage you can see the yellow pipe where we're working that's knife cut I'm gonna teach you how to do leech fields and we're gonna to put together a series of videos to get you guys there you've been asking a lot of questions and I know our subscribers are ready for it the DIY wants to know what do I do when I don't have a storm drain to take my yard drain system to or my sump pump discharge line to and I'm gonna show you in video series and what you can do when your storm drain gets overwhelmed welcome to the French Drain Man channel I'm Robert Sherwood and I'm here with Scott Francisco Marcello Valentin the veteran crew that you guys have been following for the last few years we're gonna show you today how we use the Boffman six it's six cuts it's knife cut which I will show you that in a clip that I did prior to the field here this is the drought season here in Michigan late August so we had Ju July and all of August and this is still a swamp during the wet season and I've been here for it this is just a pooling mess it's unbelievable so we're gonna show you how we take a sump pump discharge line and how we take care of the water stay tuned <laughs> we're not gonna we're not gonna cut my uh, my my fish cable <laughs> like we did at that one house man all right so we just had to track this because this sump line zigged and zagged it did not take a straight line so we're good to go on to the next part what we did is we went upstream on the sump pump discharge line and we removed probably half of it so that we had distance to lose the water in the leach field that we were going to construct, which I will be showing you in these videos. Every lot that we install a yard drain system for, whether it's for their downspouts, flood water, high water table, sump pump discharge line. I always check the soil. I want to see how it perks. We do a perk test. I also will pull a plug and I'll show you the tool that I use for that. I'll pull a couple feet and I'll be able to see what I have here. I knew that up this far in the yard we had a really good say 16 inches I believe it was when you got to the back over here we actually dug right there and did a test hole and it was just all clay and that's why this just sat that's why the water would go nowhere when you try to discharge your sump pump line and you're asking the water to basically be absorbed by the subsoil in a high concentration it's just not going to happen it has to be dispersed over a very very long area and you really do need to engineer some sort of leach field that has a reservoir large enough to hold bulk water and let it leach over time obviously we we have some good soil here at the surface but we get in the clay after that 16 inches this is going to be a fun one for you the diy and the contractors out there and I do want to mention, I realize that for the homeowner, you know, some of the stuff we're starting to show you now is getting to be a little more advanced. I understand that. And what we can do in a day would take the DIY guy a lot longer, many weekends probably. 
you'd actually probably need to know a contractor that had some equipment to make it worth your while unless you were just just a true do-it-yourselfer where you loved to be hands-on you know boots in the dirt and i know a ton of you guys and and we have a lot of subscribers like that that describes a lot of our subscribers and and we love you for that we do because we have that in common but we're doing a vertical well right here i'm gonna get some perk out of this it's gonna work out really well and then it's gonna have an overflow into a horizontal leach field this is again you know starting to get to where you need equipment you're hauling out a lot of soil you're bringing in a lot of drainage stone and we're introducing a new pipe we're going to show you guys what we've been doing everybody keeps saying you never show us the leach fields only when they're done you show it we see a green lid in the grass and you say that the leach field is over there and you're absolutely right i really haven't been showing that for a few reasons one it again you need more equipment more material more haul out it's more advanced but I did promise you that this year we were gonna take you to the next level and we we're gonna show you more. So Scott's, he knows how to do this. I mean, he's being patient with that so that we don't break anything. And he's just easing it along. We're starting to get down in the clay and that's gonna be a problem. Scott's a pro at this. You see how he pulls that out? He doesn't keep it spinning so that he can shake the dirt off on plywood. You can tell that this crew has done this hundreds of times i mean this is just this is perfection this is just perfection i really and and you know we don't have to rehearse for this the guys i just show up and i start making videos for you and they just do their job that's it i mean right now you know they're just kind of you know talking you know casual you know this is like water cooler talk for them and you know they know that the real work is yet to come the machine right now is doing the bulk of the work and Scott's trying to get this down to a depth. We like to get it to 48 inches because then that way the frost can't get underneath this vertical, it's basically what you guys would call a drywall, but it's gonna go out to a leach field. So Scott's over here, this soil is so rocky. It's There's so much rock now and we have to just take it easy so that we don't break anything. You can see Scott shuts the auger off and he raises it. That's a veteran move. I I see the rookies, what they're doing. They're spinning dirt, they're spinning dirt, they're spinning dirt, they're spinning dirt. They lift this thing up and the dirt's slinging off and falling back in the hole. So Scott knows how to run the hydraulics on this. He can feather it, he can get it, you know, he can make this machine do anything. I mean, it's just amazing. These guys work with this equipment every day. It's like an extension of their body. There's so many rocks in this clay. This is really a grinding vertical drop that we're creating here. I mean, normally we can blow uh, a four foot vertical drop and we could, we could just, Scott and the guys, I've timed them where six minutes, boom, believe it or not, ready for a crock. That's how quick it is when you don't have these big, look at that, that's four or five inches, uh, five inch cobble rock, yeah. I mean, that's some big stuff. And they're down in the clay now too. So look at that, he's got all that dirt. I mean, there's gotta be a wheelbarrow of dirt there and he's just piling it up. You know, so these are things that can help the DIY when you rent this equipment because obviously, you're getting familiar with the equipment and you need to do multiple jobs to run the equipment like this and honestly you need to do, be running it for years to actually know the things that Scott knows. I mean Scott he came in him and I started working together when he was 17 today in this video he's 45 so I mean this guy is a veteran and when it comes to machine operating there's nobody better so I've had guys break this auger multiple times rookies and we just don't even let them run it anymore for that very reason now that skitter that little mini loader 
that has a diesel that's turbo powered and man when when that turbo when it winds up it it can break implements it's a powerful machine so that would be ditch which is 1050 sk 1050 equivalent at the time there were an sk 850 and then when they upped it they called it an 850 plus which later now they're slapping a decal on it that you know it's an sk 1050 so that you know guys if you're looking for something with some muscle that's the machine you want so we're down in the clay they're removing the cobble and it, and this is a hard dig scott could tell something wasn't right he could feel it and the guys are trying to you know remove you know five these are like five inch cobble rocks in clay and that's you know so you know they looked like they were just holding up shovels but they're working they're working pretty hard there that's for sure so like i said the the real work's yet to come here but this is a a job in rochester uh, michigan and unfortunately the street this home is so much lower than the street out front that all the water comes running i mean he has a channel drain across his driveway there's so many things here he's been battling water the whole time that he's lived here so this is going to be basically the last piece to the puzzle to straighten out all his water problems you know he asked me is this overkill i said absolutely not because once we get into the rainy season and this sump line is highly active we're going to fill this vertical drop and we're going to fill that leach field but this is a pretty fun job for contractors like us you know the stuff we've been showing you guys that's some boring stuff to us just running something to a storm drain catch basin that's not exciting that doesn't get our you know blood boiling but you know we love stuff like this this one was fun and we did it in a day you know i can't i can't see exactly what time we checked out here but i want to say we were we were done by about four and uh, the job went smoothly because you know this is something that we do routinely and i'm going to take you to see another situation in bloomfield michigan and the difference there is there's no storm drain at this house you're going to see a bigger leach field that's more advanced at this house when we go to bloomfield there is a storm drain but here's the catch during flash floods the storm drain can't keep up and that presents a problem so we got to build a system that not only catches all the water but we got to build a system that is a large reservoir so this meant a lot of dirt haul out a lot more stone brought in and now again this is asking a lot of a diy project so do know that and I know you're capable of it. I know we got some we got some DIYers that are more than capable of it. But for some of you who you know you you watch these videos and you and you wonder, can I do this? Uh, these two systems here, you you got to be committed. You got to be fully committed. All right. So here's an example of what you need. That was a truck and a dump trailer that was full of clay, and they all came in with stone. Dump truck, dump trailer, came in with stone, leaving with clay. You know, we, we roll up here, we got a 35-foot gooseneck, you know, two minis. Then, then we have our excavator, the mini excavator, too many skids, two pallets of plywood. Scott's got to pull that with his dually. And this is the home that we're working at. We're going to put knife cut in the ground in the front yard, in a leach field i was pulling the i think it's a 20 foot uh, gooseneck dump that was full of clay our tool trailer we brought in stone on this uh, dump truck and we hauled out clay with it so we did this job in a day this one here did roll to about seven o'clock at night we rolled out of here late so i'm going to show you two you know systems and like i said these are more advanced i'm not saying the diy can't do them but i'm saying it does take this kind of equipment so you know a system like this this would be a DIYers I'll say a month of coming home from work and his and their weekends you might want to actually 
you know, hire to have the stone delivered and then literally pile up the clay in the, uh, in the bottom of the driveway. And then you can hire uh, a contractor with a skid loader to come and haul it away for you. That's not bad. And then, you know, you save a ton of money. And if you're a true DIYer, you believe that the only way it's going to be done the way you want it is if you do it yourself. I know how DIYers are wired and that's totally cool. And to a certain extent, you're absolutely right. It doesn't mean if you had it hired out that it's not going to work. You know, I, I, I know there's a lot of competent contractors out there. So when we get back to episode two, I'm going to show you what's going on in this backyard. All right, DIYers, until next time, let's just try to do it right the first time. Welcome to the French Drain Man channel. I'm Robert Sherwood, and I'm here to help educate the homeowner, the DIY, and the contractor so that they can make the right choices when it comes to building yard drain systems. This is Boffman Tiles Knife Cut. And knife cut is when you don't grind out any material. It's just literally, no material has been removed. There's just been some slices. So, now that I told you they're there, you could probably see them if you look really close. There's six what we call knife cuts, six uh, slits per valley. Yeah, you can barely see them. You can barely see them, but that's the point. That's the point. Now, in agriculture, in what we refer to as ag for short, this pipe replaces... When the ag, when people in agriculture want to save money and they do not want to run a sleeve or a sock, this pipe won't fill up with dirt and it takes the place of that at a more economical price. So there's your use in ag. So what are we going to do with it? Well, I'm going to take you out in the field and show you. All right, let's go. All right, we're in this backyard in Bloomfield, Michigan, and it's living up to its name, Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. You can see this hillside that's behind this house, and it wasn't done to where the water will shed around the both sides. There was, there was somewhat of an attempt, but they needed to go four or five timbers higher, create a swale so that the water would go to the left and the right of the back of the house. So... This gentleman has been just living with this fear every time there's a hard rain that he's going to get water in his house. He's got a walkout. So we did an open French drain right after the timber because the water just pours like a waterfall off of that retaining wall. You can see the guys right there. They're working with the uh, Boffman High Octane. And I gave them two lines of defense. I know that if this water's really moving after a freeze thaw, we have a bunch of melt and rain, and if the ground is frozen and it's coming down like it's on a luge of some kind, I wanted to give them a second line of defense, so there it is. This patio would have water standing on it. Now it's going to have an open French drain around it, and then the second line of defense does go to a covered French drain. He did have a sprinkler system, so that won't be an issue for him. These tie together in a 24 inch by 24 inch blind inlet so it works out pretty decent uh, it ended up there's that cover for that 24 by 24 all the water that they're trying see that needs to be swelled right there that's what i'm talking about so we're going to help the water find its way out but we need to do a leach field in the front of this house because the city streets flood and the storm drain backs up so we need a big reservoir back here for our collection area and we need a really big leach field in the front so that there's somewhere for the water when we get those torrential rains the orange and red cells we need somewhere for the water as a reservoir this will take in the water quickly swiftly 
and move it to a storm drain. They can at least evacuate the water until the, so the storm drain backs up. Once the storm drain backs up, then we'll start filling the reservoir, filling the leach field. And when the storm subsides and the storm drain catches up, that's when it'll empty out this system. So this is a really large system. We hauled out a lot of clay and we brought in a lot of stone for this system. As a rookie installer, this install that I'm going to show you, this would be the one that would trip you up. You see this cul-de-sac, you see that neighborhood. Now, this is in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. It lives up to the name Hills. Look at the homes that are down in the ravine. When you're trying to build a system that's going to take stormwater, when you have orange or red on the radar for rain, you can't imagine what you need to build. It's hard as an installer that's young or a DIY doing their first project. It's whitewater. When you have a thaw after winter and with rain, the amount of water that comes down that hillside is just it's hard to imagine it really is i remember building systems when i was a younger contractor and i remember when the big the really big storms came through i could not believe what it takes to corral that much water so this system here you know this speaks of the three decades of experience that we have there's two drains back there that are open french drains and a blind inlet that's 24 inches by 24 inches. That's just to catch all the water. It's a giant reservoir as well, as well, because what happens, you can't move the water around this house fast enough. It's just next to impossible. You need to have a system, a collection system that also serves as a giant reservoir. The city streets flood down here, so what do you do when you're trying to get this water out to the front yard? Well, now you're building a leach field. So the guys are digging a really, really large trench. You can see how wide that is. It's much wider than our usual 14 by 14 is where we start. We tell everybody that's a starting point, 14 inches by 14 inches. And the system grows from there if need be. Right where they're digging, they're going to start to transition into the leach field. So we have this huge collection system in the back. And now we're going to take the water into a huge uh, dispersal system, if you will. It's going to be knife cut in a le leach field. It's something we've not shown you guys. And that's why I put a few videos together and picked a couple of jobs to help you out. Because everybody was asking... We just don't understand what you do when there's not a storm drain. So we're definitely going to teach you in this series both what we do when there's no storm drain and what we do when the storm drain becomes overwhelmed. In this case, the streets flood, the storm drain can't take in any more water. So we want to have a leach field. For example, we just had an event where we got five inches in an hour. Now in some places like Hawaii, Louisiana. I know when these tropical storms come through, I'm told that you guys are measuring this stuff in feet. Well, we don't see that here in Michigan. Five inches in an hour, that's, uh, that's a, a pretty big deal and that's a pretty big rain event for us here in Michigan. So this system keeps up with that type of stuff, no problem. And it seems like our weather is more extreme now than it's ever been. That's not something that just occurs every few years. It seems like it's now occurring a couple times a year. So I'm going to get you back to Rochester Hills, Michigan, and pick up where we left off on that install. All right, we've been using this rubber gasket and I wanna show you guys what we do so that you're not losing your stone into your crocs or your sump pump discharge, your lift stations, whatever you got going on. We wanna make sure that you know about this 
four by four. It's a four inch by four inch rubber gasket. So you drill with a hole saw that is five inches and these seal up so nice and it's such a great fit, truly is. And then that way you're not losing dirt and stone. I mean, that's what ends up happening. Guys cut holes and they're kind of barbaric and then they just stick the pipe in and you start losing dirt your sump pumps pumping it out or it fills your crock either way it's not good so these rubber seals in my opinion are a must and we use them for absolutely everything we're going to hook the high octane up to that i just wanted to show you this and take you back to rochester hills michigan here remember to do your vertical before you do your horizontals the auger just bounces all over the place if you already do your trench. So you want to start out with your vertical drop first. This is going to be a 24 inch dual wall culvert. Uh, Scott's down in the clay and he's working that 850 plus pretty hard. As soon as he gets to the depth he wants, see he's bringing up all this heavy soil and he's just shaking it off the auger bit so that it's just easier this way to do it like that. It's the easiest way to get the dirt out of there. If you just keep it spinning and you raise it up, it just falls right back in. So look at how much dirt he's brought up. Look how, how much labor he's saved. So here's some dual wall culver pipe. So we're cutting this down. I want the guys to have this covered with a couple of feet of soil. We're actually gonna put some straw over this leach field system. This guy does not have any iron ock or he doesn't have any mineral buildup, nothing. I mean, his sump water looks like it's coming from a mountain stream. It's really, really clear. It's been that way for years. So I don't see any reason why this should ever have to be exposed. There's a rubber gasket. We use what I call the cone to you know, snap into that and we're tying it right into the sump line. Now the sump line used to go all the way to the back of the yard and it would just flood out one area of the yard. What we're gonna do is we got rid of half of that sump pump discharge line and we're gonna take that run and create a leach field. We're gonna have a five finger leach field. We're gonna have a lot of stone, we're gonna dig out a lot of clay and then we're gonna cover this leach field with straw. So you're gonna see that. So the sump line just runs, drops into this vertical drop, and then there's gonna be five fingers that come off this. So when that can't keep up with his sump pump discharge line, the homeowner's sump pump discharge line, then the leach field takes in the rest of the water, anything that's considered an overflow. All right. I can't even blame you for wearing that Yankees hat the way the Tiger's been playing. I mean, honest to God, I normally would bust your balls. I ain't even going to go there, man. I'm almost ready to wear that damn hat myself. All right, guys. Until next time, let's all work hard to do it right the first time. We're going to keep it simple. You DIYers, stay tuned for more high octane. These are contractor rolls. We sell these in yard only. There's six knife cuts in the Boffman. This is Boffman Virgin Yellow. It's yellow on the outside, it's yellow on the inside. This stuff is gonna last for 200 years to 500 years is the projected estimate on this material. Now because it's virgin material and it's not made out of recycled restaurant containers you don't have raccoons and skunks digging it up and chewing on it because we've seen it we've experienced it and that's what happens when you use that recycled stuff so we like to use this premium the premium boffman gold that yellow look for it in your knife cut your eight slot you know the high octane is virgin material too in the royal blue and all this stone, this is septic field stone. It's washed. It's a half inch to three quarter. Nice round rock. Round rock 
creates more voids and it doesn't get compacted like crushed stone. We've gone over this, but it's always good to have a reminder. So let's get in the back and keep up with the guys because this thing goes quick when you know what you're doing and you're working with a bunch of guys. For a number of years, everything flows so smooth and, and goes so in sequence, it's unbelievable. Rock and roll, man. Here we go. So this is our 18-inch bucket. Then we switched to our 14. I'll, I'll get to all the details. All right, so this is going to be three lines of knife cut. Guys, 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 when your trench is filling up with water, leave a dam, skip a section of the clay or heavy soil, and don't work in the mud unless you like to. I mean, you're, you're prerogative. All right, so we got a 24 by 24 blind inlet there. Look at this, man. Look at how nice that open French drain is. So when the flash floods happen and all that water is coming out of that cul-de-sac and it's just pouring down the steep grade, and I mean, it's just insane. So we got a curtain drain that starts right there and it's covered until this point, and then we're grabbing up bulk water with an open French drain, and then it continues, and it ties into that blind inlet along with this. So we got grass covering here, and then we go to an open, I mean water, it'll go through that stone so fast, it's nearly uninterrupted, I just, it's amazing. So, and we have our, non-woven geotextile fabric we went with our four ounce because it moves water faster than the eight and we have it put through the process twice with all the holes punched in it and it has the highest flow rating it flows more water than any other fabric period and it still has a hundred pounds of tinsel strength so good stuff good stuff now this is looking good this is looking really good i mean it sounds crazy but we get excited when we build systems and we just can't wait for like the next big you know rain to come through so that the customer can you know report back to us and just tell us uh what an improvement it is as a homeowner to not have to stress and worry about water entering the house destroying the home destroying your belongings so we're going to do tri triple pipes in here and i will get back to you how did we get to that point if you haven't seen episode one and episode two, I encourage you to do so, so you can pick up right from the beginning. This is a yard drain to leach field. When it's a light rain, the storm sewers do actually work in the street, but during flooding conditions, the streets swell up with water. So we have to build a leach field. We have an 18 inch bucket on the machine and we're digging a really deep, really wide leach field down the side of the house and across the whole front of the yard. Every soil type has some sort of perk. I know we talk about clay, how you can dig a hole the size of a five gallon pail, fill it full of water, and it just sits there for days. But we know that if that water sits there long enough, the clay starts to become you know, soft, the ground's no longer hard like concrete. So to my point, everything does leach water. It's just, it takes, it takes certain soils longer. So when you do a leach field, you're spreading the water over a large distance and you're creating a reservoir for it to stay until either in this case, it's taken in by the storm drain or it's all completely taken in by the soil. So that's what a leach field does. When you do a sump pump discharge line and there's no storm drain catch basin and you take it to a leach field, depending on how active the sump pump discharge line is, how big your leach field needs to be. So we're removing a lot of heavy soil. We rolled in with all our dump trucks and dump trailers and we were hauling out so much heavy soil and bringing in so much stone for this job. This is a fun job for us. I know the homeowner was just at ease. You know, once we got done putting in this yard drain to Leachfield, 
with the problems he's been having, you could see it. I know that it's been a long time coming for him. This is the only way to handle these situations where you're at the bottom of a hill. The water comes so fast and there's so much of it. If you can't contain it in a large yard drain system, and in, in this case, start to disperse and lose some of that water in the front yard in a leach field, it's gonna fall behind and the water is gonna find its way into that walkout. This is a walkout, so you know there's zero tolerance when you have a walkout. You got to get all the water as soon as it comes in. Time to, time to, thanks for the ride, appreciate it. Yeah. Back to Rochester Hills, Michigan, where we're taking a sump pump discharge line to a five finger leach field. The leach field is gonna have Boffman tiles knife cut. There are six knife cuts per valley. This is gonna hold all the water and let it slowly dissipate into the soil. Now I realize that this soil doesn't perk that well. We got a clay pan. That's why we're spreading it over such a large distance. When a sump pump discharge line goes on, you have gallons, gallons of water. And during a rain event, you'll have hundreds of gallons and you can't ask the small area where it's discharging to take in all that water. So we have a vertical dry well 24 inch crock right there. We have a bunch of drainage stone around it and that drywall has half inch and three quarter inch holes drilled. The water is gonna slowly run into the gravel and into the subsoil. During really hard rain events, it's going to end up in the five fingers in the leach field. This was a big job pretty decent sized leach field for a yard drainage system or for some pump discharge line in this case. But the guys are moving really, really swift. Again, it did take all hands on deck and I was trucking for Scott to make this possible. We're just about done with the well. The well is 48 inches deep. It's gonna have a lot of straw over top of it as well as dirt and that insulates it. We'll just grow grass over it. It'll be out of sight and you don't need to access this for any reason whatsoever this gentleman doesn't have any buildup of minerals or iron ock yeah i'm actually leaving as soon as we're froze out we're going to georgia so we've got a bunch of work lined up in georgia for the winter yeah there are people we get calls all over the u.s they want us to well your, your video your website is amazing <laughs> And I thought, there's no way I could do this. You know, I was, uh, no. was going to try it. I said, I'm too old for this. I'm 64 years old. There's no way in hell I could do any of this. And we, we bring in, and you know. I'm not an expert. You guys know. You know, we got a half million dollars worth of equipment in the oh, street man. that we're working with here, too. Absolutely. I tell people, even if you went to the rental store, you'd go broke. I mean, yeah. what I charge you, you'll spend in rentals. Yeah, right. So when I told Scott, I had like three or four prices for landscapers, and none of them suggested the way you did of course. You know what? And you, in your video, and I think you mentioned, I don't think you mentioned it, but in your video you said, you know, people hire these landscapers, they come in, and a year later they're calling us. Yeah. I'm thinking, I'm not going through that crap. I mean, I don't want to spend 4000 bucks in my backyard, right. but, you know, it's bullshit, right? I mean, when I you, it's a lot that money. Yeah, I know. I feel. Else, but I, I agree. this problem, and I want it taken care of right. You well, know? when you, you wait to see what we're going to put together here, you're going to be very impressed. No, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. Yeah, it's uh, it's you know, it's a big freaking project, man. Yeah, done right, yes, done right, right, you know. Right. Yeah. But these guys that come with a pickup and a bunch of catch basins, they, yeah. it's unfortunate what they do. They take people's money. Yeah. Right. And, and you've seen the prices too for like yeah, catch yeah. basins and stuff. So, and a, it's not a solution. It don't work. You mm -hmm. know, it'd be something if it would work, but it don't work. Right. Yeah. My yeah. dumpster. I have a three yard dumpster in our yard. My dumpster is full of old systems. Literally, just about every day they're coming in with systems they tore out to put in our systems. Right. And our our dumpsters is full of all this gimmicks and, yeah. and, and a bunch of wrong pipe, misused yeah. pipe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. 
Well, that's why your website, I mean, it really, because I tend to, before I hire somebody, try to do my due diligence. <laughs> sure. And your website was wonderful. Well, when you, you said your brother had some ideas, and I'm like, look, man. You know what? Actually, that wasn't my brother. It, it, was, it, it was another landscaper. Okay. And and it wasn't no work. It was a failed. To, that's a, that's a, it that's wouldn't even. He was a landscaper. He wanted like about 2000 bucks, and he was going to take where it dumped and just go right back there, like way back there. It wouldn't have worked. Yeah, it wouldn't have worked. It would have, yeah. it would have been, a, I'll tell you, you'd have been so disappointed. There'd be yeah. so much water standing back there. Yeah, and that's what I told my wife. I mean, neither one of us are happy about spending that kind of dough on this, but it's like, you know, I don't want any trouble. I don't want any hassle. I want it to work. I want it to work right. So I don't mind spending a couple thousand bucks more. So it's done. Do you know where the o Do you know where the overflow on your sump line goes? Because it's buried. There's an overflow on the sump. What? Right here. Is it, I'm not sure. I know it's just mean. okay. So you're not talking. I got a little extra, a little pipe going over here. Yeah. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. It comes right off your sump line, off the house there. Right. Is that bad? Well, if this ever froze up. But I'm going to cover it with straw to insulate it, so right. it should withstand a lot. Right. That's the that's called freeze protection, so that if you froze up, mm -hmm. it would dump just on the outside of the house. Which if it, if this freezes, the ground's froze solid and just it'll just run away. Okay, right. um, but it, it's buried underground. Somebody connected a pipe to it, so I'm concerned that that could freeze up, and now you lost your freeze protection because it should be just. I'll show you in a minute here. Yeah, show me. Once they saw online, they're probably about three or four feet. Maybe. Yeah, nobody. We went. We went four feet. How big do you want? Four and a half this? feet. Uh, big enough for five pipes, and they will be tight together. You can measure five pipes. How far are you going to take those pipes out? This fifty feet. Fifty feet. Wow. Okay, cool. Man, that's great. Yeah. You know, I, and I'm not, don't misunderstand my questions. It's kind of ignorant, I guess, but I, I, I was just wondering. Do you feel like this is overkill for a sump pump like this? Or is it no. because of the water? Yeah, that, the, mos the mosquito hatchery that you got going on over there. I mean, I know you're running, your sump's running enough. Everyone's is. Yes. And you're right, Michigan's water table is high right now. Okay. And it's expected to be high for the next four years. Wow. No kidding. So this is money well spent. Oh, good. And nice work. Nice work. That seems like a really heavy-duty container, too. That tube there. Nice. The ones, on, the ones that I've seen on... Uh, oh, that's that's culvert pipe. <laughs> is it really? Yeah, that's for driveway wow. culverts. It's like commercial grade kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Wow. Yep. Yeah. You can drive semis over that. Wow. Okay, I'm glad to hear that because I I just wanted to mention that you always want to drill your vertical drywall first, and I'll tell you why. If you start by cutting the sod off and just trenching out the leach field, and then you go for your vertical drop, the auger is going to keep, it's almost like it's thrown off balance when there's not the dirt 360 degrees all around it. So that's something that we've learned. You want to definitely do your vertical drop. Go ahead, do your auger first, and then go into your horizontals. So we cut the sod off the top. You guys have seen this before. We cut the sod and we put it off to the side. Same rules apply. You know, set your sod cutter, whether it's a rental or whether you're a contractor and you own it, set it for the deepest notch. Remove as much root and dirt as you possibly can get and it will grow over this leach field just fine. Unlike our French drains where we're taking in water, all the surface water, this is different. We're gonna have a lot of soil covering these five fingers in this leach field. This grass is gonna grow great. You're not gonna to have to worry about that. You can see the manifold is laying on the ground there. That's gonna go from the dry, dry well, the vertical dry well, to the five fingers that we're gonna have across the back of this yard here. All right, guys, until next time, let's all work hard to do it right the first time. We're going to keep it simple. You DIYers, stay tuned for more high octane.
Okay, back in Rochester Hills, Michigan, they're digging out the leach field right now. You can see the manifold laying on the ground. All those fittings put together, that's for a five-finger leach field that's going to be made out of knife cut. The Boffman knife cut. Heavy-duty sidewall, no material ground out, just a blade makes a cut. It's great for leach pipe for yard drainage. I highly recommend it. It's all we use. You're going to see how meticulous they are working to get this grade spot on for this leach field. When the vertical well fills up with water and the soil can't take in any more of the water and the sump pump's still cycling because it's the rainy season, it could be spring, fall, and could be weeks of rain. So you can't load the vertical drop with any more water. You know it's going to go to the horizontal field. You want the horizontal field level in most cases if you want to get the benefits of a leach field. All right, while the guys are on lunch, let's just quickly summarize where we're at, what we're doing, what we're doing, and why we're doing it. Okay, so there's the existing sump line. We cut off probably 70 feet of the sump line and we went ahead with our PVC two corrugated connector with some tile tape. We got that on a slight angle down. This is a SDR 90. We went ahead and put one of our four by four where it's the barbed end to the smooth wall. We call it the cone. So you've heard me say it probably in other videos as well. The cone goes in this rubber. We actually cord this out five inch core drill we stick our four by four rubber seal in and you can't get this apart that cone with the barbed ends it holds tight one of our 24 inch lids that fit on a 24 inch dual wall culvert pipe so that is strong we drilled a bunch of half inch holes throughout and we surrounded it with septic field stone then the men see this is a deep dig up here this whole thing here is going to be level and the way it's designed is there's going to be five lines of knife cut and these five lines of knife cut are going to fill up with the water during the rainy season and then the water is going to slowly be released into all this soil that you see we're going to put a layer of stone, then we're going to put our pipes down, then we're going to put an additional layer of stone, then we're going to cover it with straw, because here in the north, we want to cover it with straw and insulate it. Straw is a great insulator, and this will prevent freeze up. So we get pretty shallow down here, and again, that's because we are level. This is going to work great. Instead of dumping a sump line and having all this bulk water just being discharged in one location, of course that's going to be problematic. The only way it's not problematic is if it's being dumped on the shores of Lake Michigan. It's got You need sand. You need sand to get away with that. So this no longer is going to be taken to daylight. We made a leach field. And we're using Boffman tiles, four inch, virgin material, yellow on the inside, yellow on the outside, knife cut. They don't remove any of the material. There's six cuts in each valley. So this will be great. We have five chambers for the water. And they'll slowly release it into the soil as it takes it in. Always use the tile tape, the PVC tape. It's super sticky, super stretchy to tie all your fittings together for your manifold. If this pulls apart, the whole thing is not going to function properly and all this hard work is just for nothing. So especially here where this is a shallow, this is a shallow leach field, it's gonna catch the frost. 
you're going to see what we do to insulate it. We are going to put straw over top of it, but in a really cold, cold stretch of winter, the frost can definitely make its way to the system. And if that's the case, we don't want the ground shifting and moving through a freeze and thaw to cause that manifold to come apart. All those fittings got to be taped together. You can see he's using the handle for that PVC tape. We love those speed handles. It makes this process so much easier. And there's a what we call a cross T. You know, it looks it's a four-way four-way fitting. So he's got a cross T right there with a 90. And again, this is a, a really great, you know, five reservoir manifold for a leach field. You know, this is a, you know, baked from scratch. We're showing you guys how to do it. Everybody's always asking a lot of questions in the comments. So I'm trying to show you as much as I can. It's impossible to cover everybody's questions. We're just doing our very best here. You know, you've seen that giant contractor roll. When you hear me say contractor roll, that means it was a 250 foot roll. We sell those in yard only. It's too hard to ship them. Matter of fact, it's next next to impossible. And the freight is even more ridiculous if you try to move something of that size versus a coil 100 feet at a, at a time. So on a skid, you can get 400 feet. Remember that. Make use of your pallet, your skid as they refer to it. So here we are. We're going to take one of those rubber gaskets because I don't want the stone falling in here. That is a 5-inch hole saw. That's what you need, 5-inch. And we're going to get these for you guys. We're going to put them in the store because I want to make sure if you get that rubber gasket, you have everything you need. Now, that vertical well has a bunch of half-inch and three-quarter-inch holes drilled in it. You can see that the sump had turned on, and it's filling it with water. So it's active. The water table's really high here in Michigan. So right now, right now we're experiencing high water in the lakes, high water in, in all of uh, the canals, rivers, so we have a high water table. We're going to put down several inches of stone before we put our knife cut in. Now knife cut, remember that's six slots per valley, no material removed. You don't have to burrito wrap knife cut. You can put the knife cut on the stone. And again, water is going to sweat from this pipe. So it's not working the way a French drain does. A French drain, the water goes into the pipe. This, we want the water to go out of the pipe. So when the sump pump discharge line kicks on, look at that rubber. That's a nice seal. Stone's not falling in there. That is the way to do a hookup like this. So the idea is once the water reaches a certain level in that vertical well, it's going to fill all the horizontal fingers. Those will sweat. Just sweat and let the water slowly be absorbed into the subsoil. Works great. We do have a fail safe if it's running a lot. We do have a pop-up emitter to where if the ground's completely saturated, can't take any more water, then the pop-up emitter allows the water to come out and just run to the back a lot. But for the most part, throughout the majority of the year, they'll never see water come out of there. This field will take care of this homeowner. With his sump pump discharge line, what he's been experiencing, he's been dumping all the water in one location, so the water's highly concentrated. And We have a 50-foot leach field with five fingers. The reservoirs will hold the water until the subsoil takes in the water. Now, stone also adds to your reservoir. Remember that. The water is going to be in the voids of the stone. So this will absolutely keep his backyard dry where he won't have that standing water anymore. All right, keep in mind we want to PVC tape everything together. Now we have stone at the bottom. We have five knife cut of the Boffman. See, the guys can stand on this pipe. It's heavy duty. It's not like the garbage that you buy at the big box stores. I always talk about that. So right now they're raking the stone around. They're getting it around the vertical. We already had half of that filled before, but now we're going to top it off. You know, Scott just showed up with another bucket of 
6A. This is all septic field stone. That's what we're using. So look at that. We got five knife cut and we got the internal end plug in four of them and we're going to put a pop up on the center one. So the way this is set up, it's a level leach field and when it's fully saturated, can't take any more water and all of the four inch knife cut tubes are full, it can come out and that's not going to happen too often. A matter of fact, I can't wait for the homeowner to report to me and tell me just how often he actually sees water come out at the end of the leach field. Because the way we built this leach field, this is going to handle the majority of the water without any issues. This, it would take, you know, four or five inch rain, I think, to max this out. All right, so the guys, as you can see, they're they're just raking the stone in between the fingers, holding them down. The guys are, Scott's on his way back with another bucket of stone. And yeah, you dig out a lot of soil. You haul, you have to haul out a lot of soil. You got to do it basically a layer of stone underneath the pipe as well as a good amount of stone on top of the pipe. Now, all the voids between the stone, that's part of your reservoir. The voids between stone, between the pipes, the voids in the pipes. I had somebody in the comments section say, how does the water, you know, stay in the pipe? Well, it's a giant void, so it's going to travel down it, and you're going to get it to leach in throughout the length of it. It, it really works. And I know with our high-octane people say, how does the water find its way into the pipe? Well, it's a void, a, a giant void with big inlets, so the water just floods the pipe. So I, I try to explain it the best I can. People are like, can you stand out in a torrential rain and show us how it works? Well, I've tried, and it's so difficult to be in the right spot at the right time during one of those red cells. But I did show you one of our, our systems working in a job that we did in Macomb. You've seen it. It was just pouring water in a storm drain. So you, you know our systems work. Okay, so that's straw. I like the whole straw and not the shredded straw for the most part because there's a that's a better insulator. This this straw here has not been put through a process to where it's cut up. It's it's going to believe it or not really help prevent this field from freeze up and if this field did end up freezing up then there's an overflow at the house if the ground was frozen and the water couldn't flow freely, it wouldn't flood his basement. It would just pour out on the ground, which is no big deal. That is not a big deal. Water coming out from the basement is normally pretty warm. It's not It's not cold. It's going to come out. It's not going to you know freeze up. The overflow is there. In Michigan, we build them with what's called a freeze protection. And that's just an inch and a half, street 90, so that the water has a way to escape when it's not flowing freely in the sump pump discharge line. So the guys here are are just packing in the straw, packing in the straw, and yeah, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put dirt over top of that and then lay the grass on that. And the grass will grow just fine on this system. This gentleman does have a sprinkler system, but the way straw holds moisture i don't think there'd be a problem even if this this yard did not have a sprinkler system so this is really not your typical diy this is a much bigger job you can see where leach fields really add to the install a lot of dirt has to come out a lot of stone has to go in I don't know how DIY friendly it is, but at least now you guys understand how we do leach fields. There's the pop-up. You know, we kept some dirt and put it on plywood just to cover the straw and then level it out and then put the sod down in place. When we get done, you won't even be able to tell we were here. And we did this in a day. We were done by about 4.30 on this project, I believe so. I'm going to get you back to Bloomfield and show you the rest of that system. All right, you see the bales of straw. So we're going to be putting that over the leach field in the front yard. And you can see how we're filling 
the dump trailers with dirt. We're going to leave heavy. We dropped all our stone in the street. Leach fields, there are a lot of excavation. There are a lot of haul out of heavy soil. And there are a lot of haul in of stone. You can see the plywood road we built. The collection system is done in the backyard. Now, I do want to bring this point up. A lot of people are going to say, why wasn't there a drain put behind the retaining wall? Two reasons. One, I didn't build the retaining wall. Two, the retaining wall is not failing. The wall is not why we're there. The wall is a wood timber retaining wall, and it has a bunch of dead men. It was installed correctly years ago, and the thing's still straight. So we're always going to put our collection system where does water run remember where does water end up in the lowest point so you want to put your system where the water is going to fall where you're going to catch it you're at the lowest point it's going to go right through our open french drain in the back and then you know people are going to be a little bit you know confused on this discharge system sometimes we'll run a solid discharge line if there's only 1% slope, you bet I am. I'm going to run just a solid discharge line. Now, we continued a French drain to leach field on the side of the house because we had 3% slope. Just want to point that out to you guys. So when I tell you that yard drain systems are not a one-size-fits-all, I'm not kidding. I mean, the way we build them, it depends on how much slope the lot will give me in certain areas. Everything is so methodically done. When we get there, Scott and I walk the job. I tell him what I saw when I did the quote, the, the way I wanted the, the system to be laid out. They'll set up their laser transit. They'll take a bunch of elevation readings, and him and I will have a discussion once more. A lot of times, we modify and change the initial plan while we're there. All right, I'm going to walk up to this court and show you the kind of elevations we're dealing with. All the water is coming out of that court and down to these homes on the lower street, and they're getting everybody's water. I wanted to show you guys, this is as far as I can go because of the trees, but I'm halfway up the hill, and that's it. So it gives you kind of an idea of what we got here. We got our collection system right on the other side of that retaining wall we got a curtain drain that goes like that both systems tie into a 24 by 24 blind inlet that corner sees a lot of water I've been here when things are ugly uh, they called and needed our service and I mapped out a plan and they uh, signed up so conditions are, are better now because it's it's August And it was only bad back here. Once you got to the side, there's really good slope. So we're going to utilize that. So we take the high octane to a manifold. And there's going to be knife cut that the guys are going to put in here. And there's going to be three fingers of knife cut. And then the center one, the, the two on the ends, to the left and to the far right, they're going to end up with an internal end plug. And then the center one, it's going to go to the, a solid piece of corrugated pipe, the Boffman solid. And then that's going to be, when this leach system can't contain all the water and it gets overwhelmed, then it goes to the overflow. And that's when it'll actually send water to the, to the storm sewers in the street. But for the most part, for your typical rains, you won't even see any water make it that far. This leach field, this reservoir, the collection reservoir, and then the leach field reservoir are just too big. This was all dug with an 18 inch bucket. So it's 18 inches wide, removed a lot of dirt. We got three of our dump trailers full of dirt and we replaced it all with stone. I wanna show you 
the manifold on this one again it was a bake from scratch we just made it from a cross T remember that's a four-way fitting and a couple of 90s we have the knife cut in between there and you can see Francisco here he's getting that manifold put into place so that they can start running the knife cut there's three long runs of knife cut in this leech field see you in episode five All right, so where we left in episode four, we were starting to put the straw down. You wanna pack as much straw as you possibly can, pack it really tight. Then you go ahead and you cover that with some soil. We're gonna compact it and then we're gonna grate it and then we're gonna go ahead and put the original grass back over top. This will prevent this leach field from freezing. It would take an incredibly cold winter with a really deep freeze for this to freeze up and if we did have that happen as you know we do have our freeze protection with that overflow at the house so that the basement doesn't flood and the sump pump can still discharge water to the outside of the home in the north we definitely have to build a lot of fail safes into our system we have to consider all these different elements that you Sunbelt region installers do not ever see. When I watch your videos and I see your installs, you'd have to be here in the north to witness it, but they would never make it up here. No way. Uh, the Sunbelt stuff that you guys are putting in the ground, that's fine when you don't see a freeze and thaw, but ca uh, Canadians, Canada, you know, this, this is the ideal way for you to do a leach field just the way we showed you. We have the stone base, we have the level um, fingers. Now, if your percolation is really bad or say your sump pump discharge line runs nonstop, well then this field gets bigger. That's what happens. When the soil doesn't perk at all, now the field's gonna get big. If the sump pump runs all the time, now it's gonna be huge. Now this five finger, Say I had a sump pump that ran all the time and the soil wasn't very good for percolation. It, di it didn't percolate very well at all. Well, we would go off kind of on a wagon wheel with these and we would do several of these five finger leach fields. Whatever it takes, you can bring in enough stone, you can remove enough of the existing soil, and then you add enough chamber, and that's key, that knife cut right there, those are chambers. And then it can slowly leach into the soil. If the soil doesn't take the water in all right away, it'll stay in the knife cut. It acts as a chamber, and then it just sweats, the pipe just sweats. And as the soil will take more, the water just runs into it. It's just that simple. So this is a recipe that works. Now, I always tell you guys, one size don't fit all. Don't build your system just like this because you saw it just like this in the video. I'm just showing you guys all the different elements, trying to show you some more advanced systems. You guys ask for it. You keep asking all these questions, so I'm showing it in our videos now. The unfortunate part is every single yard drain is a custom for the elevations, for the soil percolation, for the amount of water that you have to control. There's a lot that goes into how we build our systems, how we do certain things and why we do certain things. Now that's what I'm trying to teach you guys. How much water are you trying to control? That's huge. How big is your lot? This gentleman happened to have had a nice big yard and we had some really great soil for, oh, I don't know, probably 14 16 inches it was really good soil actually then we got in the clay but up here high in the yard we're going to be able to get a lot of this water to percolate into that 16 inches and then we have our reservoir that's just on reserve and oh, you can see the guys now they're they got Hey, this is DIYers. This is how you do things right here. You work smarter, not harder. So they're blowing off all the plywood so that 
you know, they're just going to blow all that loose dirt and dust right into where they're going to lay the sod. So this is this is the right way. Because when you pick up that plywood, dirt's going to come falling off of it. And these guys, that's why they can get a system in this size. Size. I mean, this is a a day job, but I mean, not a, to a dark job. I mean, I think we were out of here four four thirty, something like that. So I, I wanted you to see the whole process, including the cleanup and the touch up and the detail, so you guys can really get an in depth perspective on the A through Z here. And when we're done, you're not even going to be able to tell we were here. You know, that's what you guys expect from us. You've seen plenty of our videos. Okay, there's the cul-de-sac that I just showed in the drone footage. Here's one of the homes. It happens to be the home that's behind the house where we're working. All the water, it breaks right here, breaks right here. Everything's coming towards the home that we're working for. There it is. I mean, just, isn't that ridiculous? I get it. Everyone loves to live where there's hills and valleys. Sometimes they leave the homeowner to put in these retaining walls. In, in my opinion, the developer should have it professionally done and the city should inspect it. There should have been a berm, should have been a berm right here so that the water would come down and get caught up in, it would lose its energy and then it would go to that side and then go to that side. It can be easily done. There's now to haul in the amount of dirt it would take to do that correctly, and then that retaining wall would have to be much higher, and it and it couldn't be built the way it's built now. So you're literally starting from scratch. So in short, they hired us opposed to spending forty grand in some massive retaining wall and a bunch of earth and redoing the sprinklers to accommodate and redoing the grass, and so this is. A cheaper alternative for sure so we have the two systems that are the collection they keep all the water from getting in the home there's the door wall right there here's where they come together at a 24 by 24 blind inlet there's some bulk water that comes into here now if we have a flash flood in this starts to fall behind the system this is built so big it's going to contain and hold all that water we have a single line of boffman high octane just to kind of pick up a little bit of water that does sit in here and then we connect it to three pieces of knife cut we have four inches of stone under these three pieces and now we're covering them with stone, and then straw, then dirt, and then put the grass back. We're using Boffman's internal end plugs. So these are plugged on both sides. If this line falls behind because it's a flash flood and the streets are flooded, when the, when the streets flood and the storm drains can't keep up and the water literally backs up. Water stops flowing into the storm drain. It can't keep up. It's waiting for the storm to break and for things upstream to finally get moving. And then, that's beautiful, that's beautiful. So you see how we got the tile tape going from the Boffman solid and there's the knife cut. That's a really good connection. Super strong, super sticky. This tape lasts for 200 years. It's amazing stuff. Super stretchy, super sticky. It's great. We use it for a lot of different things. So this is a small leach field. It's gonna be a reservoir, and during light rains, it will take care of the water. 
this system here is pretty amazing as far as being able to disperse the collected bulk water, protect the home, and then across the front of the yard, let the leach field do its job. So just wanted you guys to see this because seriously, this crew gets this stuff put together and buried so fast, I, I miss it. So I just wanted you to see uh, the nuts and bolts of it. All right, so remember, pack as much straw in as you can. We like to use the whole straw. The, the straw that's you know ground up and fine, that's for putting over grass seeds, so you don't want to buy that landscaper straw. Buy the real bales. Especially this time of year, it's easy to get because of the whole Halloween thing. It seems like in hay rides, it's readily avail available. So we got stone under the pipe. We're putting stone on top of the pipe. And then we're going to put straw over everything. That discharge line went to a city sewer that backs up during torrential rains. So it will, dis it will discharge water with the exception of the really, really heavy rains where it's torrential and long lasting. And we built a system that can hold. It, there's so much uh, of a reservoir, not just in the leach field, but even in the collection of this system. There's so much reservoir that it can hold that water when the streets flood and that storm drain can't take any more water when the storm subsides then oh that was a gentleman for one of the utility companies of course miss dig they uh they have their issues but it wasn't on us it was on a miss mark and he's taking care of a little repair um, we work well with these guys we dug everything up exposed both ends and we just work with them it's all you can do so you can see Francisco, he's meticulous. Look how he's packing that dirt in, because we don't want this to settle, because what does settling cause? Saddling. We don't want that dip like a horse saddle. We don't want any saddling. We don't want to come back. We don't want any callbacks. So he's packing it in really good with the rubber tracks. All right, so you want to pack the dirt in over top of the uh, straw. You want to pack it really good. Just walk it down, walk it in. It's going to be kind of spongy, but just go ahead and take the heel of your boot and just pack it in really good along the edges so that you can butt your sod up and it fits really tight. The tighter that the sod is pieced in and together and pulled together, the better it's going to knit. If you burn the edges, it's going to take forever for it to knit together. So we build the road in, and what do we do? We build, we start to disassemble and work our way out. Let's head back to Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. All right, we're at Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, and I wanted to show you the system with the grass on top. Right here is where the manifold was. The French drain to leach field literally came together. There's our 24 by 24 blind inlet. You can see how perfect the, we put these pieces of grass. It's like a puzzle. And then you see the open French drain. To our new subscribers, an open French drain is when you don't have any grass growing over top of it. The water runs right through the stone, just uninterrupted. Nothing moves water faster than an open French drain. So we have two lines of defense. Here's a covered French drain. So one was a fully open French drain. This one was covered to open because there was so much water collecting on the patio that I just wanted to grab up all that water. Both these systems run to a 24 by 24 inch blind inlet. Now this is a finished product. The grass will mend, this will heal. I mean, it, it'll knit together quickly. This is amazing, the work that these guys do. I mean, it's just unbelievable it's second to none all right guys until next time let's all work hard to do it right the first time